the um, spiritual path can be so blissful, exciting, but it can also be so uh, disappointing and frustrating and even exhausting in the end. You know, because you, you do it all right. You d you've done everything right. You've, you've been to the retreats. You've sat at the feet of the guru. You've given away your possessions. You've lived on an ashram for three years. You've, you've meditated to your blue in the face. You've, you've opened your chakras. You've healed your inner child or children. You've, you've had incredible experiences, spiritual experiences. You've tasted incredible spiritual experiences. Experiences of, of great bliss, experiences that you thought would never end. You've, you've travelled to alternate realities and, and, and transcendent realms and you've, you've gone through um, you know, elevated states of consciousness and, and you thought it would never end and you always thought that you were getting there, that you were getting there. And maybe at some point you even thought that you, that you had got it, you know, that, you, that you've had the final insight, the final understanding, that your search is over. Um, you know, there's funny that isn't isn't it? There's almost this need in us to believe that we've somehow arrived, that we're somehow done, that we're somehow finished, that we've understood everything there is to understand, that we that we know, that we know now. And of course, life and in its infinite intelligence um, won't let us get away with that. Um, and you know, I with all of our spiritual evolution, with all of our understanding, with all of our insights, with all of our knowledge. Sometimes, if we're honest, sometimes we find that the moment is difficult, that the moment is full of uncomfortable feelings, that the present moment is, doesn't feel perfect. We may know intellectually that everything is perfect and everything is oneness and everything is awareness and expression of awareness, but Actually, <clears throat> sometimes, if we're honest, we look into the moment, we look into our present experience, we find there's, there's discomfort, there's fear, there's anxiety, there's stress. Uh, or maybe something's happened in our lives, we, we've lost something or someone, or we've got some very difficult decision to make, or some old dream has died, some relationship has ended, or uh, there's been some crisis, and, and it's brought up in us very difficult feelings, difficult thoughts and feelings that perhaps we thought we would never experience again because we thought, perhaps we thought that we, we, we'd done it, we'd finished, we understand now, we get it now, you know. And, um, you know, at some point you can become <clears throat> uh, disillusioned with the entire spiritual search, you know, all the, the promises, the second-hand promises of how this how it was going to be, how this moment was going to be, all the teachers, the gurus who promised you pure, perfect bliss, happiness, um, contentment, all, all the second-hand promises. At some point, perhaps, you start to become disillusioned with all the promises, you know, um, with the, all the ideas of how this moment should be, how your moment should be. It's a wonderful thing to become disillusioned. It's a wonderful thing, your, your, your old illusions are starting to die, you know, so it, if we're honest, sometimes we feel lost, sometimes we feel broken, sometimes we feel lost, sometimes we feel that we're in this place where nothing makes sense anymore, <laughs> perhaps yesterday it made sense, yesterday we felt enlightened, yesterday we felt we had all the answers, yesterday we felt so certain, but today that old friend, uncertainty comes to visit, that old friend, doubt comes to visit, that old friend, <clears throat> uh, fear comes to visit, that, that, old, that old longing, that sense of longing, that sense of not quite being complete, that we, we thought it had gone away, we thought we were done, we thought we were finished. So in moments like that, it's so tempting to want to, <laughs> as I say, um, often I talk about rewinding and fast forwarding, we spend most of our time not in the moment. We spend most of our time rewinding and fast forwarding, trying to get back to a previous moment, trying to get forward to a future moment. So whenever, especially in this in this modern world of ours, you know, we're never really here. You know, we, we, we seem to have lost that intimate contact with 
where we actually are with, with this moment, with this living thing called life. We're, we're trying to get back into that. We're trying to rewind in the movie of our lives. We're trying to rewind out of this present scene to get back to a past scene that was better. Yes, we want to get back to yesterday's joy, yesterday's answers, yesterday's certainties, yesterday's insights, yesterday's enlightenment experience. But the nature of experience is that it's always changing, it's always passing, and you, you can't get back. And on some level you know that. All we want to go for, we want to fast forward to tomorrow's bliss, tomorrow's joy, tomorrow's answers, tomorrow's certainty, tomorrow's solutions, tomorrow's um, whatever, whatever it is, we want to, we want to get there. So we want to get there, we want to get there. But really, you know, here, here is, is where life is, this moment, here. This is where life is. This is where the solutions will appear. This is where the answers will come, if they come and when they come. This here, now, this present moment is the place where joy will come, if it comes and when it comes. But it seems, it just seems that we've kind of lost trust in this, this present moment, you know, always trying to escape it. We seem to have lost trust in it. So this is, you know, I, I, this is what I do these days. I go around the world um, reminding people of this deeper invitation that no, that no matter what is happening in your life, in your life circumstances, which is always changing, which is really on some level out of your direct control right now, the circumstances of your life, what happened in the past and what may or may not happen in the future, that you can't really make contact with those places right now. They're so far away. Yesterday is so far away, in a sense, and tomorrow is so far away, in a sense. I invite people to come back to what's very close. What's close right now? What's immediate right now? What's living right now? To make contact with what is close. And it's such a relief for people sometimes to you know, to realise that actually right now, perhaps, they don't need to know all the answers. Right now, you don't need to have the solutions. Right now, you don't need to have worked it all out. Maybe it's not a question of working it all out, having all the answers. Perhaps it's a question of turning towards ourselves, turning towards our present experience, making contact. This is, this is what I love to do with people. I love to um, just sit with them and, and make contact. You know, so if they're right now in this moment, well, if, if you're experiencing a time of uncertainty, you know, if, if you, right now you're feeling doubt, great doubt is appearing, or sadness or frustration or anger or just that kind of empty lost feeling, just for a moment, let's not run away from that. It may contain very important information that 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 energy in you it may it may contain um great healing actually you know it, it might it might just be a part of you that wants to move actually wants to be felt perhaps it's not a mistake perhaps the things that we say that, that are wrong with this moment perhaps they're not wrong Perhaps this moment can't go wrong. Perhaps this scene in the movie of your life can't go wrong. You know, a movie scene doesn't go wrong. We may not like a movie scene. It may upset us or frustrate us, but on some level we know when we're watching a movie that however difficult the scene is, however much pain there is in the scene, on some level we know that the movie hasn't gone wrong. The scene hasn't gone wrong. So it's about cultivating that kind of attitude towards your present experience. So this is what I always invite people to do. So so right now, if 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 you're feeling angry, you're feeling sad, you're feeling frustrated, great. Let's use that. Let's use that. Let's meet that. Let's not turn away. Let's not rush to solutions in the story of your life. So where do you where do you feel that in the body? Where do you feel the sadness in the body? Where do you feel the anger in the body? Where do you feel the that sense of longing? Where do you feel that sense of Loneliness. Where do you feel it in your body? Come closer. Instead of searching for solutions, let's see if it's really a problem. 
So can you find that feeling in your body anywhere? Maybe maybe you feel it in your in your belly, maybe you feel it in your chest, maybe you feel like a a tightness in the throat, maybe you feel it in your in your head, like a like a kind of a heaviness in the in the head. So get get closer. Take away the, take away the word. Take away the word. So st for just for a moment, stop calling it sadness, stop calling it anger, stop calling it frustration, stop calling it longing. Stop calling it loneliness. And actually bring your attention back to the raw sensation in the body right now. Feel directly the the raw, alive sensation in the in the belly, the tightness in the belly. Feel it. Feel the 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 contracted feeling in the chest or that, that kind of tenderness in the throat. Just for a moment, directly. Feel that energy without trying to get rid of it. We're not trying to get rid of it. We're not trying to change it. We're not trying to escape it. We're not trying to numb ourselves to it. We're not analysing it to death. We're becoming fascinated. We're becoming curious about this mystery that moves in us. This, the mystery, this energy that moves within us. So if you just for a moment take away the, the word... And just directly feel, bring your presence, bring your attention to that part of you that is so desperately longing for your attention. And remember, you're not trying to make it go away. You're not trying to get rid of the sensations. What you might find is with attention, the sensations actually grow in intensity, but that's wonderful. Just, just stay close. Stay very close. You're not even trying to allow these sensations. This is the key. This is what brings so much relief for so many people that I meet. You're not trying to allow or trying to accept this energy within you. You're not trying, you're not efforting, you're not striving for acceptance. You're not placing acceptance in the future. You're not making acceptance into a future goal. This is really about remembering that whatever energy is moving in you right now, however intense it is, it's already, it's already moving. So in the sense, it's, it's already allowed to be here. It's already allowed because it's life. It's not against life. It's a movement of life. It's a movement of life. So in that sense, it's, this energy is already allowed into the moment. It's not a question of how can I allow this? Because that's what becomes so stressful and exhausting and frustrating and leads to so much disappointment is trying to allow this moment. We're remembering that this moment as it is, present thought, present sensation, present feeling, present sounds, they are already life. They're already perfect expressions of life. They're already allowed already allowed. So when we come out of the drama of our lives, we come out of the past and the future and what has or hasn't happened in the past and what may or may not happen in the future, we gently bring our attention back to what's actually happening, what's live in this moment, what lives. And we begin to contact these parts of ourselves that are just longing for attention. I mean that that's when the true healing can begin. In in a in a sense when we stop trying to heal, we stop trying to fix this moment, we stop trying to escape this moment. And perhaps even we stop trying to accept this moment. If what's appearing in this moment for you is a sense of resistance, a sense of non-acceptance. Wonderful. This this is this is another energy that's obviously already allowed into the moment. Even resistance, even that fiery energy of resistance, even that can be a friend. This, this is about making everything into a friend. Meeting everything that appears, thought, sensation, feeling, even that energy of resistance, meeting it with a sense of curiosity and fascination and, and gentleness and kindness. 
but you're, you're saying to that energy, like, I, I see you. I'm exhausted from trying to fight you. You're welcome. You're welcome here. Every thought, every sensation, every feeling is welcome. In this, we're only ever talking about this moment. I know the mind wants to fast forward and rewind, but this moment, this moment, because this moment is your home. Really, it's all you've ever known. Thoughts, sensations, feelings have come and gone. Memories have come and gone. Dreams have come and gone. Imaginations of the future have come and gone. Very intense, incredible states and experiences, of course, have come and gone, but they've all come and gone in this moment. This moment is the place of contact. They've all come and gone in, in your presence. In your presence. All ideas of the past appear and disappear in your presence. All ideas of the future appear and disappear in your presence. Your presence, it's it's what you've always known. It's what you've always been. This unshakable, unchangeable presence in which everything comes and goes, every thought, every sensation, every feeling. So it's not really a question of how to be present, you see. It's not really a question of how to get into the present. What you truly are, who you truly are, is presence itself. This wide open space in which past can arise as thought, memory, feeling, and future can arise as thought, memory, feeling, imagination, dreams. But who you are as present doesn't appear and doesn't disappear. It allows all this appearing and disappearing. But who you truly are has never appeared or disappeared, come or gone. So then it, that really deletes the question of how do I get into the moment? Or how, and how do I stay in the moment? And how do I prevent myself from leaving the moment? Because you come to see actually there is only the moment. And you are that and you can't go in or out of yourself just like the ocean can't go in or out of the ocean waves come and go in the ocean thoughts sensation feelings states and experiences but as the ocean you remain present constant familiar intimate that which you've always known that which cannot be doubted so it's not a question of going in or out of the moment because if you think about it, whether you're in the moment or out of the moment, both of those movements would be happening in the moment, in your presence, in your presence. So your presence is the simplest thing, something you've always known. Throughout all the states and experience of your life, even the, the ecstatic spiritual experiences and the mundane everyday experiences, the blissful experiences and the painful experiences. You've been there, you've, always, you've been the one constant throughout your life. So in the end, what I would say that, that what's, that's what spirituality really becomes about. It's you, you, you lose interest in chasing that which comes and goes, the impermanent stuff, including the most ecstatic states. And spirituality becomes all about not attaining but remembering, not rushing towards something in the future, but remembering that which is always present, remembering that which is always present, and it's you. <laughs> it's you. And that's it.